I've gotten ahead of myself again. Looking back, it's clear Baron Connick was not looking forward to guests. However, I did essentially have a whole castle to myself. Naturally, I immediately went exploring. You keep walking. You've gotten the general layout of where you're at, the, the key landmarks, and Charles takes you to the guest wing of the castle and shows you to your room. Are there many other people that live here, like residents besides the Baron? Or is it just guest rooms and the other military people in the other quadrant? Miss Cunningham, there's a large number of staff here, but uh, you are currently the only guest. The castle house is probably a couple thousand soldiers and the staff here and the Baron. Does he have family here with him or is he the only other resident that isn't employed? Charles visibly gets uncomfortable at that question. He kind of stiffens up and thinks hard for a moment before replying. And he says, Miss Cunningham, it's not my place to speak on that behalf, but it is best to leave the matters of the Baron's family alone. I see. Dinner will be served tonight in the dining room, as I showed you. Feel free to get comfortable and acquainted with your room and have a pleasant evening. Thank you, Charles. Feel free to explore the parts of the castle at your leisure. Just remember the places that are marked off limits and we'll see you at dinner. And he closes the door and leaves. Ivy's room has a very nice four poster bed and it's much larger than the room she's had for the last couple months with Brad. <laughs> That's got a nice desk and some large curtains and a window that looks out into the garden. Oh, wonderful. I think she sees the window and immediately smiles and sighs and like twirls around and just like flops on her bed and smiles. And she's just so glad there's a window and to a garden. Very pleased. So where we're at is Ivy is in her room getting settled. What does Ivy do after getting settled in her room? She walks out her door into the hall and she knows that she's aiming for the garden. She's going to go there, but she's going to take her time because she has nothing else to be at. Going to slowly walk down the halls, the corridors, and look at all the things, the artifacts, the art, the suits of armor, and learn from it and soak up this building and what she can see. That sounds like a perception role to me because you're actively looking for things. So we're going to use your perception. Let's just look around. A yellow and two green. Okay. You just had a tour of the place. So this is probably a two purple roll. And can she have a boost because she is really used to perusing museums and gleaning information from historical art and artifacts? I think that's already represented in the boost that you get naturally with this character. Oh, okay. But could she get a second boost because she has a lot of time and can take her time going slowly and really look closely at the details of things and read anything that might be beside, I don't know if he put placards by anything. Yes, you can have a boost for that. I'm going to add a setback, though. Oh. You're adding a black because the history of this place, the artifacts and the people that are here, isn't necessarily displayed in an overt way. As we described on the tour, most of the stuff has been gifted and the Baron seems to be not one for opulence or proving that he has things. I have four success symbols, two threats, whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> it's certainly going to mean that there are very few, if any, placards about where things came from. That's the two threats? It's at least a threat. Okay. <laughs> Meandering around the castle, one of the first paintings that Ivy comes across, it's a portrait of a group of people and a large group of people standing in rows in their military uniforms and okay. their dress uniforms. And the Baron is in the middle in a general military dress uniform. They look like they posed for this picture. Mm -hmm. And the placard just labels the painting as the, the Golden Lions of Kildale. Ooh, but him and his Baron regalia, is that the right word? It is military regalia. 
because Baron is not a military, it's a political, yeah. What is his military role? Is he a general? How often has Ivy interacted with members of the military growing up with her family? So I know that she goes to a lot of events that her father has to go to because of his job. Colors. Yeah, so Ivy would notice that painted on the on the uniform is the markings of a general. Okay, cool. And he's in the center, and then he has lower people around him? Like, they're not... They look like they're his soldiers. Okay. They're a very big group. People are rows. It's maybe a hundred people or so. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Okay. That's the first painting she comes to. Yep. I have four successes. Does that count as one or like two or three? (laughs) I've given you one success worth of information so far, and I've paired it with one threat of there's just the title of the painting and not really anything else with it. You were wandering the halls and one of the prominent things that you found was this painting. What room does Ivy wander into next? And what type of artifact catches her eye? I think it would be a room that has like some kind of trophy type thing. Things that represent accomplishments, award. Yeah. So Ivy's wandering the halls, heading back towards the garden. And she's trying to take a new path. And she comes to a room that looks similar to the library she saw before. And wandering in, she sees some bookshelves, a a small fireplace in the corner with a mantle on it. And on this mantle is a framed board with like, I'm picturing kind of like a shadow box that has like pillowy material on it and pinned on that material are some military medals. Okay. Looking at them, I don't think Ivy would recognize anything that they are particularly four, but they are proudly displayed over the mantle of this fireplace. And I know how many, mm-hmm. how old they look, and if there are any words on any of there the There are four. Like if they're silver or they turn, I don't know what they'd be made yeah. of. <laughs> the, it's difficult to tell, but the metals seem to be arranged in a row, as I said, of four. And the furthest left one looks the oldest. It has a ribbon of blue and white, and the metal itself is circular, and it has a ring of like some laurels around the outer edge and a large horseshoe shape in the middle. So would I look at it and think it definitely looks military or could it be something like okay I guess there's two different kinds of metals like no I was thinking ribbon it's a metal it's not a ribbon it's not like you got first place in horse riding right. it's a military metal these look like the ones that you've yeah. seen pinned yeah, to the shirt and what the, co- what kind of metal is the metal like physically like gold brass silver like a tarnished silver the second metal has a slightly different pattern but it has the same blue and white colors in the ribbon it's a more brassy yellow one and it has a forearm and hand clasped around a burning torch the third metal has the same blue and white colors in more of a checkered pattern but it matches it has a similar kind of brassy look to it And it's the smallest of the bunch, with the medallion being a bit more oval, and it doesn't really have like an emblem in it. It's just kind of a brass oval with an etched Mm -hmm. checkerboard in it. And then the last one is the newest looking one. It has green and red on the ribbon. Like the soldiers that she saw. Like the soldier she saw with James. It has a a square medallion on it and a fist clasping a saber. Doesn't matter what color it's it's a brassy one, but more more bright, less patinaed. All of them do look like they've aged some. They haven't necessarily been polished in a while. After Ivy inspects the metals on the mantle, 
she happens to kind of glance up and really she's not sure how she missed it before but hanging over this fireplace is a family portrait it has the same general from the other painting and a stern looking black haired woman in front of him and a young boy about two sitting on her knee he's standing and she's sitting yeah. lower down in front of him yeah. typical family portrait yeah. in a line but just three people just three people and he's in his 30s in that yeah he looks like he's in his mid 30s what does he look like what do i get from her society she's dressed in a very fancy dress okay but because this is a painting and it's a typical nobody's necessarily smiling in this painting right, right. she definitely has a very stern look okay. on her face and as Ivy kind of finishes taking in that, she hears Charles' voice behind her. But what are you doing in here, Miss Cunningham? This is the Baron's office. This is <gasps> off limits. Please come. So sorry. She's terrified because she had no intention of going somewhere she wasn't supposed to be. Why was this? Why was the door wide open? <laughs> she just wandered in somewhere and thought it was like a sitting room library or something. I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't realize, I didn't realize. I won't do it again. Okay. As long as you haven't touched anything, Not I, think, a- I think it will be okay. Just let's leave this wing of the castle quickly. Can I show you back to your room? Yes. I was looking for a path to the garden from my room. I'm so sorry I went the wrong direction. Yes, you can show me the right path back to my room. He does, and he gives Ivy a stern reminder that end of the castle is off limits. Oh, so much cringe. <laughs> <laughs> and then he leaves her alone again. She just decided, like, she wanted to still go to the garden, but uh-huh. she's like, fine, I'll, I know the right path. She thought she was going to just find a different way. It was uh-huh. a big place. Didn't know she went the wrong way. Trixie GM. You're the ones who rolled the threat. So many, that's been like so much a threat compared to my four successes. <laughs> you got a lot of information. You just don't know you have a lot of information okay. yet. I would like to clarify. Oh, I guess you already said they all had the same kind of expression. Nobody's smiling. I wanted to be able to tell, like, does the little boy look happy or comfortable with this woman? Really? The thing that stood out before you were interrupted as you're looking over it was that the woman had a very stern look on her face. So Ivy's just got a little bit more time left Uh before dinner. Mm -hmm. Are you changing for dinner? I was thinking she's already looks nice because she wanted to look nice for her trip to meet people for the first time. But it was still maybe a travel dress, and she thinks that's nice to look like she's being respectful of the dinner time and place, a little bit more cleaned up because travel can make you icky or whatever. So she gets on a better dress, and she does not go back to the garden, even though she really wanted to, and she's frustrated that she didn't have enough time. But she decides, okay, suddenly this place is weird and mysterious because she can't know about this guy's family. She saw a weird door what's going on and she's never really thought of herself as a sleuth before and suddenly her sketch notebook is now going to be a like clue diary and she sits on her bed and she pulls up her sketchbook she doesn't have other things she doesn't really keep like a big journal Mm -hmm. there's very few handwritten notes for some reason but now this is new and she's got a page that she's gonna write and scribble down things she's learned about these two pictures she's writing about the medals and she's going to write about the door because she wants to piece this together. But she's going to do it in, not like in code, not in like literal code, but in an inconspicuous way. Just because she feels weird. Like if someone read it, she doesn't want anyone to know she knows about it. Something to let herself remember, but not say what it was. So she's writing, she's keeping notes suddenly before dinner. I'm going to close yeah. that up and tuck it away and okay. go to dinner on time. You arrive at dinner and it a pretty elegant looking dining room as well as a castle can have as opposed to let's say a palace there's a handful of narrow slitted windows that the sunset is just peeking through the majority of the dining room is dark woods on the wall it feels feels heavy feels a little dark and, and there's a lot of shadows in the room how is it lit just the few slitted windows. Go in that room after dark. There's probably a few candelabras, but there's not 
very many. As you come into the dining hall, it's still warmed by a fireplace in the middle. It's a very rectangular room, and opposite the windows is this large fireplace to, to kind of heat the room. And there is a long dining table down the middle that has probably enough seats for like maybe 20 or 30 people. Can I get a judge of if it feels like a formal dining room that's meant to have like other dignitaries and stuff over or if it's just like the personal castle long dining table? It's the formal dining. As you come in, there at one end of the table is a place setting with the dishes laid out and a candelabra kind of in front of it. It's on the fireplace side near the end of the table. On the other side of the room is the head of the table and the Baron stands from his seat at the head of the table as you come in. So there are literally only two spots set. There are like two Charles spots doesn't set. eat with us. And there's okay. like 10 chairs between you and the head of the table. So there are a few servants there to help they get you tucked into your seat <laughs> comically far away from the head of the table and the baron has only given you the respect that you would deserve as a guest and that he stood as the lady entered the room and he sat after you were seated and he gave you a nod in a kind of curt hello but he hasn't really spoken and it's clear the baron is content to have dinner in silence. What does Ivy do? What does a young lady say at, at a formal dinner? Just not that she would. I'm just like, what is what would be the norm, the appropriate? Like he didn't say a word, but he stood and then sat. And she, dinner's being served. And he, but she knows that he doesn't want to talk. Oh, it's hard to know if she would respect that and not want to rock the boat or if she would be like naive and like try to get something out of him. Oh, that's what she's going to do. She's going to say, thank you so much for having me. I don't think we've officially met. I was delighted to see your beautiful garden. Such a lovely place. I'm so happy to be here. I'm eager to find out more about your hopes for the mural. And she'll pause and see if he will respond (laughs) or wonder if there's supposed to be some kind of formal meeting at which we discuss this later. She doesn't even know who she's supposed to be talking to about it. She's just here. So we're going to do a social check for this. Okay. Because the Baron's initial reaction is just kind of a curt grunt and nod. Uh, I'm looking at your character sheet. It uh, looks like you've got two options. You can try and be charming, uh, or you can make this a negotiation role. What would that narratively like mean? The It would narratively mean that you're trying to open up a conversation to understand more about the commission of why you're here and kind of negotiate with him a trade of information. What do you know? What does he know? (laughs) So what do you think? Negotiation feels weird. I don't really, I can't wrap my head around that story-wise. So I feel like charm makes more sense, but I didn't realize I had such a low, go with my low ranking low, charm. Low, low ranking charm. Okay. <laughs> That's so sad. I'm disappointed for her already. Dang it. Two failures and a triumph. How does that work? You fail triumphantly. So as the player, you can decide what you want for your triumph. But if you don't have any ideas, oh, I have I ideas. Have. Oh, I have. Well, what's your idea? <laughs> I have ideas. What's your idea? Well, you tell me your ideas uh, first. You, no, you first. No, you're the player. It's yours to spend. First, you tell me. Oh, I'll decide how it spins. I just wanted to hear how what your thoughts were in case it was better than mine. <laughs> Here's the triumph is that somehow something about her is just clicks just right with his person, whatever he's looking for. Like if he's just sad, <laughs> maybe something about her reminds him of someone or something that makes him happy. Something to make him not be totally negative. <laughs> That would be great if they could start off on a some kind of positive foot. Pretend she said something just right. I don't know how the failures work with a triumph. I don't know what that means. You failed to be charming, but um, triumphantly. Oh, my awkwardness will work for me and he'll take pity on me and be like, like oh, sweet kid. I am down with that. So the Baron hears all of Ivy's questions and attempts to smile and to get him to talk. She sees, even from the distance, that the Baron crack a slight smile in his beard 
and gently take his napkin, wipe his beard, and put his utensil down. And then he kind of looks at her with kinder eyes than she's seen since her first run-in with the Baron. He's had a very stern and kind of angry look on his face, and now his expression has softened a little bit. And he says, Miss Cunningham, it appears we are at a similar disadvantage to one another. You see, I was not informed that our Empress would be sending yet another artisan to further adorn my walls. However, I suppose it is truly unfair of me to take my frustrations with the capital out on you. I'm so sorry, Baron. I assumed that you yourself had commissioned this painting. I certainly didn't mean to come and be any bother to you and your estate here. Miss Cunningham, I don't mean to take what my- What can we do to make it more pleasant? Is there anything you would like me to know? It's not your fault. As I said, my frustrations are at the capital and they are not against you. You see, these many adornments in my chamber, in this castle, they are, well, they've been coming in for years and frankly, I'm, I've grown weary of many of them. Well, maybe a new one will just freshen the place up a little. Sometimes if things have been around a long time, it can get a little dull. That is a good point, but it's not just the dullness. It's not that I tire of them. It's the message, the meaning behind them tends to be one of, well, to appease, I suppose. If I may, what are they trying to appease? What is the goal? The goal has been to keep me content, to keep Kildale quiet and out of the way. These paintings, suits of armor, valuable swords, I've come to see as tribute paid to Kildale. What is it that they have to pay tribute to? I'm sure you must have done something wonderful. I wish that the rest of the kingdom felt so, but I tend to see it more as paid in fear for what I've done in Kildale. Paid in fear? She wonders if she should push it any further. Well, I'm here and I don't want to cause any trouble, so I'd love to hear how I can make this the best experience for you. I don't know how it's gone in the past. When was the last time someone came to do something like this? You are the first, Miss Cunningham, and I'd say two Three years? Well, I'd like it to go as smoothly as possible. Do you have any subject matter that would that you might find would brighten the place up for you? Or I'd love to know what makes you happy. Well, so many pieces about triumph, victory, and war. Yes, many of the paintings you'll see depict many war victories. They show the Golden Lions, a regiment of my men here at Kildale. I saw one of the gorgeous paintings of you and the lions who are they the golden lions are they're they're my men women those that have followed me since i rose to baronship here at kildale i noticed it mentioned you as the general are you still an active general it's been a while since i've thought about being the general of them but they've followed me for quite some time they call me general more as a as a nickname we are not a, an army as such. We are more of a community, I would call it. But yes, I suppose I still am the general and baron of, of Kildale. General is, like I said, more of a nickname. Out of respect, I'm sure. You must have done some wonderful things for all these people to be so loyal. I'd like to think so. I'm glad that, that the lions still have loyalty to me, and I try and give back and make Kildale as strong of a of a city and kingdom as I can for them, for their families. It's certainly a beautiful place. I hope I'll get to explore it a little, get to know the people. I know I'll be, be here for a little while. They wanted a pretty big mural. The Golden Lions and the citizens of Kildale are a welcoming community. I would absolutely recommend that you talk to them, have a conversation with some of them as while well you're here. If you're interested in meeting some of our residents, I would recommend visiting Kildale. It's a wonderful, thriving town. Most of the other artists that have come to commission work have really never left the castle. It would be nice for you to see the community and know them and bring some of that knowledge into the work you'll be creating. If I may, apart from the lions themselves, 
Uh, I know that they live here on the premises. Are there any other residents here that I might run into? Or are you here on your own? Well, you've met Charles. And other than Charles, some house staff, and my gardeners and cook, the castle remains relatively empty throughout the year, other than a few guests. So I shouldn't expect to run into anybody? This time you should not run into anyone else other than my staff. Well, it sure is a lovely big castle. Kind of a shame there aren't more people living here to enjoy it, as it seems like it'd make a beautiful home. Have you always lived here? Is it... Do you own the castle? The castle was given to me by the community of, of Kildale when I took over as the Baron. I govern over this province, and whoever governs resides in the castle here. I see. How long have you been in this position? It's been around 20 years now. Do you... have it, Has it always been just you? For... The past 20 years, it has been just me. I see. Do you like it here? It is quiet, and it's a beautiful place to live. And I am happy that my people and the Golden Lions are able to thrive here. You must have grown up in Kildale for them to make you barren of it, right? Are you from here since before when you didn't live in the castle? I have not spent my whole life here. I was not born in Kildale. I, I used to live north of here. Oh, okay. I haven't been up here at all. This is all really new to me. But I look forward to getting to know the your town and this beautiful place. And we'll make something really lovely for your castle walls. I promise. Perhaps take a look around and paint me something unlike anything else in this this dusty old museum of a castle. Well, I did see we're up here on this amazing hill overlooking the valley. It's really beautiful. There might be a nice view. Or would you like to take a walk together and we can find something that really speaks to you maybe after dinner? Or I can show myself around. It's been quite a while since I gave anyone a tour of the castle. I would be happy to show you the grounds and show you our garden. Perhaps the two of us can find a location. Oh, I would like that very much. Charles showed me a little bit, but I'd love to see it from your perspective. That sounds wonderful. And your gardens are amazing. I feel like there might be more exciting stories to tell about that place. Maybe you could share a little. I'd look forward to it, Miss Cunningham. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Foxglove Letters. We hope you've enjoyed the adventure so far and can't wait to see where the story goes. Before we go, we want to let you know that we love hearing from our listeners. If you have a question for our players, their characters, a comment on the story, or just want to say hello, drop us a line at diceycantina at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Instagram and YouTube at diceycantina for behind the scenes, artwork, and world building. Or if you just prefer to chat, join the Discord. Links to everything are in the show notes. If you're enjoying the show, please consider giving us a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast platform as it helps us grow the show and reach more listeners. The Fox Club Letters is a creation of Dicey Cantina, playing Genesis by Edge Studio. Until next time, dear listeners, don't forget the words of Mr. Cunningham when he said, don't just watch the world pass you by. Reach out and grab the stars.